Scott, uh, another good night of fights, uh, a great performance in the main event by Yaroslav Amoslav. Can you sum it up for us? Boy, I tell you, he looked, uh, he looked like a guy that has been not in a war zone fight, and he looked like a guy that's been training for the last five years and didn't miss a beat. Um, I know he's been training for about six months and getting ready for this particular fight, but it was impressive. I think that uh, the biggest part that I think Logan had a hard time with was just his movement in and out, sideways, sideways. I think Logan had a hard time tracking him down. He started eating some shots, working the leg kick. I think it was, it was a really a, a master performance by Amazon. Uh, we talked to Michael Vinopage earlier tonight. He's obviously fighting uh, Yamauchi coming up, but he was kind of saying he probably doesn't expect to fight for the title next. It looks like it's going to be Jason Jackson. He more than deserves it, obviously. Is he going to be the next guy? Yeah, the next fight, uh, we're waiting for, to see what happened with this fight, but, you know, Jackson's been in the in the line from the queue for a while, and uh, I think he definitely deserves it. So, you know, we're going to go back and talk about it, but that's, to me, it's probably the next fighter that's going to get the shot. Jeremy Kennedy was just here before you speaking, and he's talking about uh, Patricio avoiding him and not taking that fight. Is that the next fight also that's going to be made? You know, I'll tell you, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, to me, I think of uh, Kennedy, who's a great, super talented kid, but I think about maybe he should run it back with Pico. I mean, that's the fight I'd be very interested to see. Uh, I can think of two or three other guys, but everybody wants Pitbull, you know, but uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm going to have to talk to Pitbull, see if he's interested in the fight. But as, you know, as this kid just keeps winning and winning and winning, that's what you got to do. You keep winning, you're going to get your shot eventually. I suppose the three biggest receptions of the night were for um, Pedro Carvalho, uh, Peter Quigley, and then Brian Moore, who had a good win on the undercard. Mm -hmm. Brian Moore, and he was the only one who got the win as well out of those three. Mm -hmm. uh, next, he called out Higo again. He wants that fight the last time you agreed to. Is that a fight that's going to happen next? And are you going to push Brian Moore up the card a bit? Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I think he definitely deserves it. And, uh, you know, we'll talk to Higo because it takes two to, to, to make the fight, right? So but we'll see if there's interest on that side. And we'd love to put it together. I mean... You know, Higo was going to fight, I think, James Gallagher uh, soon, and James got injured, couldn't do the fight. But um, to me, that fight would be amazing. It would be a lot of fun to watch. The last time we were here, Sinead Kavanagh beat Leah McCourt, and you announced that she'd be fighting Chris Cyborg next. Mm -hmm. She's won again here tonight. Is she next in line? Is it going to be Leah versus uh, Zingana? Or what, what's your thinking on that one? Yeah, that's, I mean, listen, Kat, Kat is going to fight with Leah in the uh, end of March, so we've got to wait another month. But, um, you know... I think that fight will have title implications for sure. Um, and with Kavanaugh, she looked great. It's just the issue was, I think, I don't know how much damage she took on her legs. She looked like she was injured a little bit, so we'll have to monitor that. And uh, once we see if she's clear, then we'll figure it out. Just last two quick ones for me. Do you have the attendance figures for tonight? It looked a little bit down on, on previous ones. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I, I'm, 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 listen, I'm happy with it. And this, this crowd is the best crowd in MMA. They're, they were passionate, they're loud, they're singing. And to me, it felt great to be in this building again. You've announced the date of um, September 23rd, if I'm not mistaken, for the next card. Mm -hmm. What do you envision for that one? Because for the last maybe five years or so, it's been Bellator and nothing but Bellator mm -hmm. in this arena. Now we have two Cage Warriors cards coming up. We have a PFL mm -hmm. card coming up mm -hmm. as well. The more competition that comes here, is is that a, an issue for Bellator? Or is it something uh, that no, you're going to make a break? I, listen, we're doing our thing. We have a great successful track record here. I say good luck to the other companies, and, and let's see how you perform. Uh, Carl, Carl Moore is another one who had a, a good performance tonight and another person who was promised a, a ranked opponent in his next fight. Is he somebody who you could see as well getting a ranked opponent in his next one? Yeah, like again, yeah, like I said, you know, anytime we have a fight like this and a fight card like this, we always like to go back home, reshuffle the deck. But I definitely think that, you know, he deserves to move up in the competition. Uh, but how far, we'll see. There's a lot, lot, lot happens into making these fights. It's not just like, okay, hey, I wanted to fight this guy, and then it happens. Uh, we, we talk to our internal team. We talk about the matchmaking team. We talk to the both sides of the of the equation. Both have managers, you know, and then and then we'll put something together for them. Bellator have been putting on some amazing cards well, lately. There's, unbelievable. There's two huge free, uh, free agents on the market at the moment mm -hmm. in Nate Diaz, who said some very complimentary things about you, and Francis Ngannou. Mm -hmm. Are you? Is there any discussions going on to get these kind of two game change into mind? Yeah, listen, well, both those guys are. We're in dialogue with both of them, you know, and so uh, I think that uh, Stephen uh, from Showtime on the boxing side, president of sports. Had a conversation with Francis the other day when I was traveling, and uh, basically said, "Look, this is a, this is a great opportunity because you're on the boxing side. You have Showtime pay-per-view. We have all the biggest fights. They just announced the uh, Ryan Garcia versus Tank Davis fight. So the big fights happen on Showtime pay-per-view. So if they could offer him the boxing, and then we could offer him MMA. I think we'd be a great home for Francis. Nate Diaz, whenever he's ready and he really wants to, to fight again, because I think it's really, we're just waiting to see what he wants to do. We'd love to be in that mix. So it, it's just going to be a matter of time, I think.
And finally for me, you gave Dylan Dennis permission to have the, the KSI fight, which didn't go through. Has there been any discussions with him about having a fight? And at a certain point, do you think, you know, it's kind of damaging the Bellator brand being with, associated with, with him? Dylan, Dylan? With Dylan Dennis. Yeah. Listen, that's a tough one because, you know, we have such high hopes for that kid. Um, and, you know, I think, I think that we're going to have to have a serious conversation with him when I get back. Scott, congratulations on a beautiful mm -hmm. night of fights. It's an honor to meet you for the first time in mm -hmm. person. And you're about to kick off the lightweight tournament next month. How mm -hmm. excited are you about that? Mm -hmm. Listen, I think that Chael said it best at the press conference in Los Angeles. This is not, because I thought, you know, this is, this is probably one of the best lightweight tournaments in the history of the sport, right? Shell said, no, you're wrong. This is one of the best tournaments in this sport ever. And, uh, and he knows, and I looked it up, and I said, man, this, this is a gauntlet of killers in here. And if you look at the fight starting with March 10th, Usman fighting Benson, Shabli versus Masayev, and then we go to uh, uh, A.J. McKee fighting Pitbull, and uh, Barnaway uh, fighting Grand Primus. I and mean, that is a tremendous lineup, and I'm really looking forward to it. That's going to be uh, a great year for us. I think that we've been on a roll. We've been putting out some great fights all over the world, and we're going to continue doing it. I think this is the best roster uh, we've ever had. And if you look at the 205-pound weight class, I think we have the best fighter in the world. 185, we have the best fighter in the world. 170, we have the best fighter in the world. We could fight anybody, any of those, and even the, the, the lighter weights. I think 45, I think 55. But whoever wins this tournament, should, to me, would be the best lightweight in the world. I mean, that, that's how I feel. And, 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 and to, have, to be able to say that after five, six years of building this roster, it feels really good because these guys are exceptional athletes. And um, when I first came here, it wasn't like that. This was not the Bellator it is today. You know, it was a very small organization, small show. And it's come a long way, and, and uh, you know now we're we're on a we're on a good roll. Last one for me, Scott. You're going to Paris mm -hmm. in May. Yes, May 12th. And I think that's one of the best European cards that you've ever put on. Gegard and Fabian Edwards. That's a lightweight uh, tournament fight as well. Yeah. How excited was it for you to put that yeah. together and bring that to Europe and a beautiful yeah. city like Paris? Yeah, and and I, and I, my family and I, we love Paris and we love being in Europe. We love Dublin. We love traveling and, and putting on these great fights. Uh, but to have Gegard fight, you know, close to his home, not too far away, uh, against Edwards, who's a guy, another guy that's, you know, very talented. Um, and, and Barnaway fighting Brent Primus in a tournament match. So we're going to wait, you know, to have that match, and we're going to be, it's going to be one of the tournaments. So whoever wins the Usman Nurmurga Mena fight against Benson Henderson will fight the winner of Barnaway fighting Primus. So that second fight, whoever it is, is going to be amazing. And on the other side, this bracket. And that's why these guys get paid well all, all year long. They get their regular pay. And then we give them a million-dollar bonus on top of that. And the reason why is because it's such a gauntlet of great athletes. And this is a very tough tournament. This is probably our toughest tournament we've put together so far.